So, was that a real amplifier <laughs> or is this a real amplifier? <laughs> I was just trying to smell if it was on or not. Oh, you smell if uh, it was on. Can you smell the burning mean, tubes? Okay, so Bells. totally appreciate that. Um, what we've what we've got basically is a Marshall, uh, one of the new uh, Studio Series mm -hmm. uh, 1959 kind of super leading things. 20 watt. Things. Only 20 watt, Joey. Yeah, we don't have a 100 watt one. And we've got uh, the new UA Lion, which is its... Uh, emulation of a, of a 1968 Super Lead Marshall amplifier. Uh, and we thought we'd have a bit of fun. So the, the, the amp there is plugged into an ox box, straight into our desk. The Lion is just straight into the desk. Yeah. And we've got two sounds that are, you, you know, similar-ish, both, yeah. both vintage Marshall-y kind of sounds. Yeah. We couldn't get a sound that we thought was indiscernible. But let's have a listen again and you, you decide. So Okay, oh, so we still haven't, we have still we, haven't revealed. We haven't revealed. And while, while we're doing that, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that different stuff. And there's more videos up there and buy some stuff <laughs> and some merch and some hay and some boom. Here we go. Uh, right, here's the other amplifier. Yep. <laughs> Both got that real throaty roar. Just that, yeah, okay. that massively tight so thing. In each clip, the first one is a pedal, so. I mean, that sounds yeah. f oh, flipping the, great, man. Yeah, the second one is that amplifier there. Into an ox box. In I prefer the pedal. The the the, the hundred. <laughs> I mean, I guess the hundred watt fully cranked is probably a fatter, spongier sounding amp naturally than the, yeah. the the studio series. But look, that wasn't. That was just a fun introduction. Yeah. Uh, the the rest of this demo, we're just going to stay on uh, the lion. Um, wow. So. Universal Audio, clever people, uh, have done a whole series of these uh, amp in a box pedals. Yeah. I hate that terminology now. Amp, amp in a box. box. Yeah. This is not a drive pedal that you put in front of your normal guitar amplifier, and there are pedals that you know claim to give you a Marshall kind of drive sound that you put mm. into the front of your amplifier to give you that kind of sound. This is a, um, I suppose, a true sense of the whole package is in the box. So you take this box, you plug your guitar into it, and then you're straight into a PA or a DI, yeah. into a desk, and yeah. your whole amp, speaker cab, emulation, everything is mm -hmm. there. I mean, this is the one that people have been asking for. Why am you on a master? Why am you on a master? Yeah. Why am you on a master? Like, here's a master. Bang! So what were the, so the three... Vox, and they did an old Fender. They did the Wood e which was Woodrow. the really old Fender, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, the, the, like a highly driven little tweed. And they did the Dream, which was a... Dream. Um, dream. That was dream, the 65. <laughs> That was the 65 Deluxe, Nightmare. yeah, and the yeah. Ruby was the Vox yeah. AC30. For me, that was what was missing, but I think Woodrow was the one that was kind of near like an old basement type vibe, wasn't it? That I was guess. what it was, but it wasn't it was really. A bit it was an old... more like an old champ, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So here we go, Lion. Now, these, in fairness to Universal Audio, have absolutely been the most popular of all the pedals that Universal Audio have released over yeah. the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, some. Criticism of the range has Some been why does each amp have to have its own pedal as opposed to doing something you know like other brands do where you can have Nvidia multiple yep. amps that you just switch. And I think that's a fair criticism of Universal Audio there. UA will say that they wanted the knobs to be completely specific to that amplifier rather than you know multi-purpose like they would be on other amps. Yeah, but you also have to buy two, you know, so they sell another pedal. I mean, um, we're not, we, you know, we're here to sell hey. pedals. But I would say, have that and that on the end of your pedal board, boom. There was some discussion, or we, we had some discussion with Universal Audio before doing this video as well, and they were keen to point out um, 
this can be used as uh, using the four cable method. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an amplifier with an effects loop and you want to use, you, you know, you want to replace the preamp tone within your amplifier with this, you can. There you are. Yep. But we are just using its normal standalone. We've got no pedals plugged into this. Any reverb that you hear is either going to be this room uh, option on the pedal. That doesn't, that's more a sense of it sounds like you're playing the amp as if the amp was in the room with yes. you rather than reverb. So yeah, you, yeah. if we had reverb on, that would be in post-production. Yeah. yeah. So. But Marshall don't have it. I mean, this is James Santiago again, and there's a video out there with him just, uh, talking about all the cabs and where he got the cabs from and what amps they are and, you know, original old Marshall amps. And he is the king he master is. of these tone he things. Is. He is incredible and his ear is magnificent. So you've got the choice, king, as you have with all of these kind of products, to either create your own settings. There's a bunch of factory settings that come on the app. There's a bunch of artist settings that come on the app. Well, so, at the moment, that's only James. Oh, he's the only <laughs> yeah. artist, is he? Yeah. Okay, they don't fine. have any artists, funny enough. Um, there are artists I, I know. on the other I pedals, did some, there? actually, for some of the other pedals. Did you? Uh, yeah. yeah. But this is new, so new still that they haven't um, so, got some yet. I so, I think where UA go with these is they're not really trying to do the whole MIDI thing. They don't want to do the whole, you know, lots of parameters to mess around with. It's very much a hands-on pedal. Yeah, no loads of um, AIRs. Exactly. So, oh yeah, that's, of course. So oh, everything that Universal Audio do for their speaker emulation is proprietary modeling software mm -hmm. for them. It's not Which AIRs. I like. I like that. Yeah. Um, so over here, we've got three different types of amplifier. We've got the bass version of the amp, we've got the lead version of the amp, and we've got a brown sound, which is a sort of, uh, I guess, if you if you read the, the description of it, it sounds very much like the kind of amps that Van Halen was using in mm -hmm. the early days with the Variac and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the two volumes, volume one and volume two, like you would have on the amplifier. You've got an overall output volume, which of course you wouldn't have had on the original amplifier. Uh, and then this bottom row here are dual purpose. So in its standard sort of amp mode, they are an EQ, bass, middle and treble. If I switch this switch to the alt mode, it becomes the room element presence and this interesting boost function, yeah. which initially as you start to wind it up is um, EP style boost. Mm -hmm. And then as you get further around, it becomes more like a boss EQ apparently. That's what I'm being told. And then you've got six uh, cabinet and mic options here. So three green and three Yeah, when you red. register, you get another three cabs in there. Um, on and off button over here and the option to save one additional preset. So one sound you get will be wherever the knobs are set and the other sound can be stored. Oh, look at that switching over there as well. Yes, yeah, switching app. over here. I think we're uh -huh. recording, aren't we? Yes. So yes, why yes. don't we just have a little listen. I'll set it kind of like halfway, uh, mm -hmm. EQ kind of flat. Uh, boost off, boost presence halfway, a little bit of room, and we'll just have a little listen to. Should we do the bass? We'll do the bass. Yeah, let's first. start the bass, super uh, bass. And we're starting with this uh, Greenback 25 loaded 4x12, which I believe uh, is one of Joe Bonamassa's cabs. So you can find out more about that. <laughs> Not the universal isn't it? audio. Yeah. Oh man, I mean, honestly. Big and boom. Yeah, we can have some more volume of that, man. Do they do like treble, middle, and bass door switches? Do they? Like... Sorry, I'm it's just... classic. It's classic Marshall, Marshall. EQ. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know if you play. Yeah, it's ca that, that's it the just, treble control. It doesn't the do The mid range much. feels more like. Yeah. That's just so, classic so masculine. Bass isn't it? and middle do a bit, treble does next to nothing. What's about the presence? What's presence about the presence? Okay. <laughs> Taylor's laughing because I said, What's about the presence? Full Let's room? Put some room. Yeah. Ooh. That is like the, yeah, there. but that is like a microphone that's put down in that end, yeah. isn't it? That sort of records it, isn't it? Tay, um, Malate. That sounds good, though, man. We it does can sound wonderful. see what some of the driven tone. I mean, I guess everybody would have associated this era of Marshall with just being driven heavily. So. <laughs>
I mean, it sounds bloody fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, so it does. I quickly hit the edit button on, on the app. Uh, it's a very, very simple edit screen. None of the actual um, gain and EQ levels, etc., etc., are accessible via no. the app. So you have to do all that editing on the pedal. Yeah. On the app, you get to choose your input routing between low, high, and jumped, obviously referring to the, to the uh, input stages of the amplifier. Ghost notes, we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, bright cap, uh, I should have asked Tom what bright cap did. They put into the, it's a mod. Oh, it's a it was a mod, is it? Yeah, yeah, it was a mod they I made see. into the amp, so. Let's, it, try, let's try it. Hang on. Maybe it's just on one of them. I think I assume there was something in, yeah, but these are all subtle things, I think. Um, and a, but, no, and a noise gate built in, yeah. uh, which we're not, we're not going to use. That <laughs> noise gate. Well, maybe we unless, should. Unless it's get, really loud, right? Maybe when we go over to the single coil, if there's some bad yeah. noise, we'll, we'll have a try. Uh, that's basically to, it from the just, from the app. Let's go like that. Let's see. Well, there's your noise gate, though, isn't it? it? Does what a noise gate does. Yeah, exactly. Right? Turn okay. it off. Turn, uh, it off. turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> Uh, let's just go through, well, uh, let's go through, let's go to the let's lead the setting. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's m m m more, f most people would have been known for using the super lead rather than the super bass, I guess. So uh, here we go. We want that, tre that uh, presence. Should we go through some good, speaker doesn't it? Speaker cabinets. Yes. Um, so are, Sorry, I can't stop playing because it sounds so great. So there are six speaker cabinets, um, and each one is mic'd <laughs> in a way that uh, James Santiago likes. Exactly. Which is essentially, the big difference between this and all the sort of two notes and other type of IR yeah. based stuff. He's a fantastic the, player as well. Universal Audio are very much. Here are the six speakers that yeah. we like. The end. Oh, wait. Uh, yes. yes, as opposed to normal IRs, which are here are ten thousand options. Yes, but, uh, which none which of them you, you like. Which you may find, you know, better. So oh. that's up to you. Anyway, here's here. So that first one, sorry, was the. Um, uh, here we go. It's a 1968 basket weave 4x12 uh, with the vinyl removed with Celestian greenback speakers <laughs> mic'd with a ribbon 160 and a uh, and a dynamic 57. Um, this next one now is a 30 watt yep. closed back 4x12 mic'd with a 57 and a 121 ribbon mic. So, are you showing me the noise gate? Yeah. <laughs> something about this when I when I you know got the pedal in I didn't plug it in till now because mm -hmm. I wanted the effect, the effect to come on screen but I was reading up on the ghost notes thing and it happens to some of these ACM 800 amps they do now and people actually send them in because they don't like it so right. they'll have it removed where well, lots of people like they didn't say musicians like Joe Bonamassa or whatever they love it and that's why they they love it so but people, some people don't like it, but I don't well, understand. This was, it's this harmonic thing going on. It's like a lovely think blanket of... I we filmed this section of the video, but if we go back to 2013, 10 years ago, I was doing the, the launch video for that little one watt Marshall amplifier yeah, yeah, yeah. that Anderton's did for its, its 50th anniversary. And Joe Bonamassa was the, the, the guy that Marshall had asked to come and demo it. Mm -hmm. And the more I think about it, the more I think this, was, this, this wasn't in the video. But I remember talking to Joe off camera about, you know, guitar amps. And, and he, had, he has this 
unbelievable. It was at that point that Next I realised that, that there's there's a, there's like there's what I know about gear, which is a fair amount, and then there's like what Joe Bonamassa <laughs> knows about gear. Yeah. So he started talking about why, with his martial amplifiers, he will only use them on a four x twelve, like cap. cranked yeah. into the four x twelve that it was playing to, rather than you know you often see people with amps in one room and cabs in the other and all this kind mm-hmm. of stuff. And it's to do with something to do anyway with the vibration that the cabinet gives off, um, causing the transformer in the amplifier to to vibrate in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that sound is picked up through the uh, head and creates these ghost. What 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 Universal Audio have have, have called ghost notes. I don't know if that's the technical term for it. But this idea, as as well as what you're playing, you've also got these, um, I suppose, a bit like... harmonics and some stuff on frequencies. What do they call it on a a piano where you play one note, but obviously all the strings? No, whether... um, Sympathetic resonance. Sympathetic resonance. Anyway, whatever. Okay, so this next one in the red mode is a blend of a 1968 basket wee 4x12 cabinet with the vinyl removed, so that's what we were hearing before, and... A 4x12 cabinet with JBL 120F speakers. Ooh. Both cabs are mic'd separately with dynamic 57 mics. Okay. Uh- Very can raspy, I, isn't can it? Can I like, just change while you play? <coughs> so people, that's three seconds of your life you will never get back. Thank you. I mean, yet again, demonstrating just how much difference different speakers make to the way an amp What the right, difference? Right, three more to go. So when you first buy the pedal, you have to register it with Universal Audio, and then they give you these bonus yeah. cabinets. What you do when you log on, log on to the app and all that stuff, it goes automatically, you register it, and boom, done. So this is a classic 12-inch, 200-watt ElectroVoice EVM12L <laughs> speaker with a massive magnet in a 1x12 cabinet with a 414 condenser mic. So Not that- necessarily something I'd normally associate with this type of amp. But oh, they were talking about that in the video. But I, he, I was talking about something. Uh, it's a great recording. It's like having right. a Not you know too much um, yes, and you'll yeah. have it in a um, what is it called? The, ca- the cabinet that is closed up. Yeah. Wait, what is it called, man? Isocap. <laughs> What's so amazing about <laughs> the way they've nailed this pedal is this amplifier was, it was that first generation of valve amplifiers that players just went, I'm gonna turn this all the way up just to get oh, that distortion yeah. oh. tone. And then do a bit of again. And then, but, so yeah. the amp, there's this chaos going on. There's this massive amount of compression as the power amplifiers, you know, on the verge of exploding. The yeah. pr- you know, the, it, it's, the and the blue, speakers, the, all the speakers everything. working against each other in the cab and doing yeah. this different, I think, you know, they're all working against <clears throat> each other. The, I mean, it's I think as valve amplifiers, particularly high gain valve amplifiers have evolved over the years, the, the sound has become much smoother, much more controlled, much more defined. Yeah. And, and I almost feel like that's an easier sound to model. 
like this is the hard sound, a bit like an AC30. It's yeah, a yeah. hard sound yeah. to model because yeah. it's such a weird, so much com compression and harmonics going on. Anyway, uh, right, the next one is a custom ported cabinet with British 65 watt speakers, blah, blah, blah. It says here, tight bottom end uh, and favored by many blues and rock players. So why don't we okay. see how it reacts to that? <laughs> It's so raspy and old, yes. old fashioned, isn't it? A bit like the wood row where you go, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really know if I like that because. And then you go. Nah. And then you kind of understand. And this is what Can we, we keep that talking the telly? about. We can I do. I kind of feel like if this is the one that they're sort of, this cabinet is one they're maybe aiming at more bluesy players. But isn't I mean, this what, blues what, is, what is rock if it's not just it's not just blues? <laughs> not a slow, <laughs> With but yeah, more exactly. distortion. <laughs> Back to the, the super the bass because yeah. I kind of feel like for that oh, yeah, there more rolled off there tone. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Jimmy style, isn't it? something rain here so we're not Ooh. crazy loud i was looking over at the de decibel meter and we were hitting about 85 okay peak, all right and i was thinking to myself okay that's not that loud you know when we're doing other mm -hmm. amps in that room it's not that loud but they captured the, the speakers it in the fields general. well not fields is the wrong word it sounds loud yeah I don't know if that's even possible. It, you, know, like, you, you know, it's like, it just, it, like, because we, that's the one thing we hate, isn't it? Is playing It has to, you have quietly. to have a certain volume to experience the feel, right? And I think that, that's why we keep saying that, or I keep saying anyway, but the Friedman capture that, the, the sound that Marshall used to be on a recording that you listen back to and you play it, it sounds like that. Mm. This is this is doing that, but just old school proper. This is like, but what, don't you think? And Marshall have to be so loud. If I'd have said right. to you, if I'd have said to you, oh, wow, Pete, we were hitting 100 dB then. Yeah, I, don't I wouldn't have, I wouldn't you have wouldn't noticed. You wouldn't have noticed. There's no, no way we would. No, Because like, it, like it sounds loud. Yeah, it feels loud. It is, yeah. It feels loud. It's really clever. Anyway, look. I think it sounds now. bloody um, awful. The third and final, uh, or the sixth, I suppose, but the third green one is a is a vintage 30 loaded okay. uh, 4 by 12 So that's a much more modern kind yeah, of vibe. Yeah, yeah. So, so actually, I'm going to go on to so the... So I go back to the old... Uh, yeah, and, I, and let's go brown sound So I go on to the so, Paul. So this brown setting here is 100 watt super lead, so the same as the setting we've been on, but nice now game. with a Variact power, a circuit tweak, and an EQ'd boost. Uh, and you know, again, if you know your guitar folklore, uh, you'll know 
who did that and it got nicknamed the brown sound. <laughs> It's all those harmonies that, or those harmonics in it. All those, no offense, <laughs> harmonics on the album. Do you know what I mean though, on that, on the 70s, 1974, where it's just, you can, it doesn't, it's got that old school where you go, it doesn't really sound that great, but it sounds amazing. See, I, I'm not Does a, that make sense? I'm not a Van Halen sort of aficionado, but no. there are people that say if you can find the stems of the old, um, yeah, guitar parts yeah, yeah, yeah. they used to put on before it was mixed into the track. They're pretty horrendous. Yeah, but you can kind of hear not horrendous that, sounding, but you know, they're not, they're not like, a, they're not how you would think not, they would sound. Exactly, but this is what I'm trying to say. This is what mm. people want it to sound like. Yeah. But it doesn't, it sounds like this. It's just broken. The compression just, it's just is limited. limited. I was on the, I apologise, I was on the wrong, well not the wrong cab, but, that, but I was on the previous cab, so now, even now then, I'm on the vintage 30. Okay. I thought it sounded more like Van Halen before. <laughs> That's too, too you know what I mean? Yeah. You also have to remember in the studios, in the studio when, you, when, when you're recording a 4x12 cab, you only mic one up. Yeah. It's not like, this is like all of it, isn't it? Well, so, I don't know, I mean, it's... It's too boomy, isn't it? Sounds great. I, I don't man. know if he's done a demo of this, but I think if I was a huge Eddie Van Halen fan and I really wanted to see this put through its paces, I'd go and see if Pete Thorne had done a demo. He has it. done. Has he? Yeah, and it's great. He, and he, he normally does the, absolutely the brilliant, yeah. thing brilliantly. Can we just have that bright cap on yes, and see course. what it does? Okay, off, please. One last thing to, to demo on this. Um, I, as I said, I don't want to labour the features. Oh, they're, they're relatively featureless, but again, you get stereo in and out if you want it. Um, the only reason to hook a, a, a computer up to this is to do firmware updates. Yeah. Everything else is done mm -hmm. via the Bluetooth uh, app, uh, which you can run either on a phone or a tablet or, and on Android or iOS. Um, but it's, very, you know, and, and it's just got two... Actually, I'd say it's got two modes. The, the um, live and a preset mode, right? Oh, and then you've yeah. got to, you. You can actually um, let's see what we've got here. Options, right? Okay, so you can set this so that we've got standard on and off mode and recall the preset mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're you know live and preset, or you can do it so that this button toggles between live and preset, and this button's a boost. Actually, cool. to be honest with you, I think that's cool, actually probably a better more usable Try it. setting for a guitar. Careful, careful, player, careful, 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 careful. Um, <laughs> but so, see what it does with the boost. I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna put it now on a on a less gainy setting, because it'd probably be slightly easier to hear what the boost does. So let's just go back to that uh, super bass kind of sound, and let's go into our alt mode and see what the boost does. That sounds good too, man. Okay. No boost, we're yeah. a bit less game. Yeah, yeah, it's rock and roll. A little roll, bit I, I, I 
again, it doesn't feel like a boost pedal in the way I'm been brought up. No, like yeah, it feels again, and I'm going back to almost just thinking of the sort of folklore stuff of all the guitar players that would use <laughs> like a preamp section from a from a tape echo or something like Jimmy that. Jimmy Page. Just to fatten it. So but they push into the amp as well, yeah, not yeah. like Megan dancing. I need to have to push afterwards. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> because Was it's that like Nick or Dan. No, that's <laughs> both of them. Whatever. <laughs> These kids, you know, because the boost, if it goes into the amp, that's what it did in, in the old days. This yeah. is what distance though doing, Yeah, so, right? so rather, than, <laughs> rather than it be a pedal that you would They're switch on and anyway, off for an effect, no. it's an always-on yeah, yeah. uh, fat and fat. Yeah, like. exactly. It's just like I, really, a, I like the room thing. I like the way it almost yeah, double tracks. I think it sounds great, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what people were saying out there. This sounds great, and you're gonna love it. So, well, there you are. Presets on there. We've just uh, got oh through gosh, some. I mean, there's a zillion. Just a couple. Of, just give a couple of these uh, artist preset type just, things. Just, just some. Uh, so just I need to be in preset mode, and there we oh, go. Oh, so, Here we go. So these are James Santiago's ones. Stripped. So again, it doesn't tell you a lot about it, but it basically gives you an idea of what. Um, oh, Super B, that one there. Dime Super B. Fuzzy what? Fuzzy bear? That's in, that's in notes there. Well, that one. Tight metal gate just for you. <laughs> and then last one, uh, John Wayne special, True Grit Lead. <laughs> Yeah, man, it sounds I just realised these are in it? alphabetical order as opposed to anything to suggest that they change in a certain other way. But right, wow. that's it. Enough. Uh, how much is this? I don't know, man. Don't it's probably know. the same as the others. You'll have to go to the links below uh, in the Anderton's website. That's good, man. Um, I suspect being Universal Audio, they'll be one of the more expensive, uh, reassuring. Three ninety nine, maybe something like something that. Three fifty nine, something like that. Three something somewhere, like that. With, somewhere around about that four hundred pound mark. But look, I mean, I think that's what. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like. If you just, I, I really do think they've done those amp things well. I could they do the, They do the best, I mean, yeah. I could see, I, I know there's going to be loads of arguments about, you know, oh, it's expensive and blah, blah, blah. By the time yeah. you bought four of these, you could have bought a quad cortex and me, blah, 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 me, blah, me, blah. Me, but me. I think if I, <laughs> I think actually these two. I like, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Those two together. Those what two. What else do you need? And some pedals into that. You're I think, done, I man. think you might be right. So we just anyway, have, be, I'll play out with some cleans because I want to see if I can make a clean out of it. Just uh, a slightly like a clean. moonish clean then, as yeah, a moonish, preset. Moonish clean. But, uh, Where did the Where reverb, reverb come, come from? from? 
It's a GB30 cab in a stock amp mode with a bright blending volume one and two custom halls. Uh, made, made with Angela, Angela Petrelli. Petrelli. Hey! Where's the reverb from then? Now I don't know whether, I don't know if we're now ending on almost a low now because I'm annoyed about the fact that you can only get that reverb by having some sort of like custom artist Ooh, preset as opposed to it sort of being built in, but I don't know. What? Is it working off the room thing or not? Yes! Yeah. There you are, I'm just... I'm, I'm saying Universal Audio, come on, give us the reverb, man. Yeah, that you sounds amazing. Give us the reverb, Whatever there's just a, is... an option on what? any of them. Hang on, wait, what? Wait, 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 we should just end. Just end. That sounds okay, absolutely that's it. fantastic. Fine. Wow. Well done, uh, Universal Audio. Uh, that is a great little pedal to add to your range. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Well, thank you. Mr. Thank Pete. you. Thank you, Mr. Epic Lee. playing. Um, and yes, um, please like and subscribe. We're very, uh, we may have even surpassed well. the next 10,000 subscribers yeah. where someone's winning something. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.